Hi everyone, welcome to day 14 of Building Our Daily Art Habit. Now today it would be so easy not to paint because I have been into town taking my husband to work today. I have been doing computer work all day while he was at work. I was working in his office on the computer writing my blogs and various other things while he was working as well. And then as soon as I got home I had my daughter text me and say oh, I've forgotten my cricket shoes and I had to turn around and go back out and take those to her because she had an away game and um, she needed her shoes. So when I got back I hadn't had a cup of tea or anything and I was like oh it'd be so easy just to sit down and relax and not do any painting or any more work but I'm here and I am going to do some work. Now I'm not going to do a continuation of yesterday's painting where I was going to do the autumn leaves on the background that we did yesterday because I just don't have the time and the energy for that today but I did have an idea for doing the background in another way and I'd quite like to do that today and then compare the two backgrounds and see which one that I actually like better. So that's what we're going to do today and also we're going to talk about making art a priority in your life and how you do that and why we don't. So let's get started. So for this one I'm going to start off with my interference paint. This is a interference green paint and you're not going to be able to see much on here on the white canvas. But this is going to be my base coat. I'm going to use three different colours of interference paint. And I've wet my canvas before I start just to get things flowing because the canvas was pretty dry. And I'm going to use some blue interference paints. As you can probably tell, you can't actually see any difference on the white canvas there. So I had actually no idea if this is going to work or not, but I'm just going to try it and see what happens. And this is some purple interference paint. making sure I've covered all the bits of the canvas. And then I'm going to dry that off. I realised I um, hadn't put my microphone on for the last bit, so hopefully you'll be able to hear it alright. Now I don't think you'll be able to see the effect unless I put it in the sun, so I've just taken this over to the window where it's a bit lighter, so you can see what the interference paint looks like when the light hits it. I'm just ignore that bit where I got impatient and was seeing if it was dry, and it wasn't, but Hopefully when we're finished, we won't be able to notice that anyway. So that's what it looks like at the moment. Now I'm going to do the coat on top. Okay, uh-oh, I've um, done it again and forgot to press record. So all I've done is I've very roughly roughed in some colours, just um, some turquoise and some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue and some white, and very quickly just painted that on there. So it's all still wet. And now I'm going to get my inks and put a few little ink drops around. And I'll have to repeat myself because you didn't hear any of what I was saying. Um, so I was talking about the YouTube video I was listening to this morning while I rode my bike. I was listening to How to Gain Control of Your Free Time by Laura Van Become, and it was on TED. 
and she's talking about time management. I'm just dropping a few colours on here. Oops, that one went a bit crazy. So she was talking about how we find the time to do what we think is important. And, and how you finally find the time for the things that you prioritise. So we often don't find the time to paint because we don't make it a priority in our lives. We don't think, well, I I don't. You might, you might be um, better at this than I am. Uh, I don't um, make art enough of a priority in my life, which is why I don't have time to do it at times. I'm just going to spritz this with water. So I often... Um, I devalue my own time by sort of thinking to myself that oh, there are other things that are that are more important than me doing my art because my art doesn't contribute enough to the household to be important, and that that's the kind of messages that are going through my head, which aren't helpful. Just ripped my trousers by putting my hand on the ink all over it. No, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't value my time of um, doing my artwork enough to make it a priority. And she uses the example of the really busy lady that she was interviewing that um, had gone to a meeting one night and come home and her water heater was broken. I'm just getting some plastic wrap now and I'm gonna lay this on my picture. So her water heater was like broken and her carpet was wrecked and she had to make the time to organise plumbers and get it sorted out. She had to get the house fixed up and get a new water heater so she could have some hot water and things. Now, over the course of the week, that took her seven hours to sort out. Now, if someone had asked her at the beginning of the week, if she could find seven extra hours in her week to do something, she would have said, no, can't you see how busy I am? But because she had to find the time, she did find the time. And that's the point that Laura was making, that you have you make time for what's a priority in your life. Is the key to time management is to treat our priorities like that broken water heater. Everything I do and every minute I, is mine to choose to spend whatever, the, whatever way I decide to spend it. Rather than saying I don't have time for X, Y or Z and I don't do X, Y and Z because it's not a priority. I don't have time often means it's not a priority. So saying, I don't have time to do my art, it often just means I don't, I'm not making art a priority in my life. Okay, so this is hopefully dry now. So I'm gonna take the paper off, take the plastic graph off. reveal all the nice patterns that we make. Okay, it's not dry underneath. <laughs> I can see that, but that's fine. I'll just dry that off with the hairdryer now because we've got some of the patterns and things that I wanted to get going. So I'm going to dry that off and then um, I'm going to do another coat, I think, because there's not enough 
depth and the colours are a bit bright, I need to dull some of the colours down a bit. You're a bit too saturated. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I've dried that off now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some clear painting medium. And I'm going to seal this before I do another coat because I don't want um, the colours to, to mix. Because I use the Italia Interactive Paints, and this is only just set, if I put paint straight on top of this, um, the colours underneath would reactivate and start moving around, and I don't want that to happen. If you're just using normal acrylic paints, you wouldn't have that problem, because once normal acrylic paint is dry, it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to get some clear painting medium, and I'm going to mix in a little bit of iridescent medium, as well in that, and I'm just going to go over the painting and I might put the odd bit of um, interference paint mixed in with that acrylic painting medium as well. So I'm just doing a sealing coat, or sometimes they call it an isolation coat. And that'll just stop any paint from moving around and lifting in those underneath layers when I put one on top. So this needs to dry now. Dry now. No sticky bits on it. And now I can come in and do the next layer. And I'm going to do exactly what I did the first time, which you didn't get to see because um, I forgot to turn the camera on. Yes, I have the camera on this time. Um, I'm just going to put in my colours. Using the diagonal movement. I'm not being particularly careful about it, I'm just spreading the colour around. So one of the um, examples that Laura made in her talk about time management and making things a priority. She was giving an amusing example of, I could tell you that I don't have time to clean my vines, but that wouldn't be true. I just choose not to do them. But if somebody came and offered me $100,000 to come and clean my blinds, then they would get done pretty quickly, is what she was saying. Now, I thought that was quite amusing about how we prioritise things in our lives. One of the things she was talking about as a method for setting our priorities is to look to have a think about what you would like your yearly Christmas newsletter to say or if you think about it in terms of career what you would want your job performance review to say so she said instead of thinking about what it's going to say at the end of this year, think 
about what it would say at the end of next year for you to have the most amazing year what kind of things would that performance review say what what would be in that performance review to make it the most amazing year you have ever had so she said pick three to five things to write on there that would make it an, the most amazing year for you I'm just going to get my lab wrap and redo the lab wrap. Um, so calling it lab wrap because that's just the, the brand name and it's been called that for so long that everyone just calls it lab wrap. So it's actually just a plastic cling film that you use in your kitchen. That's it. So Laura was saying. Think about if you were writing your Christmas newsletter and what kind of things would you put in there to say that shows people what an amazing year you've had. So in art, what, would, what are the three to five things that I would think about in my art career that would make it an absolutely amazing art year for me. And then once you have those things that would make it an amazing art year for you, or for me, then, you, then you've now got your plan for how you're going to set your goals for the year. So it's a bit like what I was talking about in one of the earlier videos. Um, what experiences do you want to have and then work your goals from there? So, you know, what, what would make this the most amazing art year ever for me? What do I need to do to make it that? And then I can work on making that the most amazing year for me from those goals and I thought that was a really interesting way of looking at it and it's it's a nice simple way to think about it but I think it'd be really powerful to think okay in a year's time what do I want to look back on and say this is what I did this is what made my year so amazing So, I'm going to have to let this dry again. So here's what that picture turned out like. Now I'm just going to put it in the sun a bit so you can see how the iridescent medium and thing shines on it where it shows through. It's a little bit hard to actually see what it's doing in the sunshine on the video, but there are little sparkly bits and things that show. This, this is how this one's turned out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of video and you'd like to see more. So here's the background all finished. And I'll have to see what I want to put on top of there later because I have decided to use my other background for my yellow oak leaves but I, I will use this one for something else and happy painting everyone I'll see you tomorrow bye